Hi guys, Professor Ruggieri here for the last lab experiment of the semester, Ooh, the ELISA assay. So about 30 minutes prior to actually starting, you're going to want to go into your refrigerator where you presumably had this green bag, inside which was this little bag right here, containing not these three, but all the other tubes here. So you should have a positive control, a negative control, and then patients A, B, C, D, E, and F. And then in a larger bag, in your box at room temperature, you would have this ELISA simulation bag containing a bunch of tiny transfer pipettes with a much finer aspirator, as well as three tubes, one of simulated chromogen, right, the colored molecule, so that you see the signal, simulated antigen, and secondary antibody. Now you may ask, where is the primary antibody? The primary antibody that in a real person would be made in the B cells, right, that become plasma cells, it would be in the patient's serum sample. So that's what we're working with here. So I want you to keep the big picture in mind. We're gonna be coating this plastic well plate, 96 wells, right? And it's kind of like reading a map with longitude and latitude. Right? We have the coordinates, so the rows are labeled A through H, and then the columns are labeled one through 12. So based on the coordinates, we'll know what's in what row. And we're gonna be following this protocol here. So the first thing we're gonna do is add three drops of simulated antigen to each well in rows A and B of the microtiter plate. Make sure to place the drops in the bottom of the well and consistently on one side of the well. Do not use this pipette for any of the other steps. For each of the following steps, four through 11, make sure to consistently add the drops on the opposite side of the well from the drops of the simulated antigen. Okay, and there's a figure it says to show how they should be distributed. Oops, figure three right here. Okay, so the plus C is where the positive control is gonna go, the negative C is where the negative is gonna go, uh, and then patients A through F. Now one thing I wanna point out in this little segment too is what a positive and a negative control are. You are not going to know if your test, your assay is working or not, unless you basically internally check its validity. So a positive control here would be a sample that you know should elicit a reaction, in this case, a color change, okay? So dark purple here, as it says in the protocol, is indicative of a strong positive result. So your positive control should be something that you add. Now in this case, what are you changing? The only thing that you're actually changing in any of the wells, right, that they're getting differently is different patient serum. So a positive control would basically be somebody's serum that you knew was positive for a particular antibody. The negative control should be something that you know will definitely give a negative result or generate no result, here meaning a green color. We wanna check the validity, because what happens if our positive control, the one that should give us the purple color, doesn't? All right, then that means that something's wrong. Either something's wrong with our positive control or something is wrong with the rest of the test. Likewise, right, not, not the same result, but the same, we have to re revisit things, is if our negative control, the one that is not supposed to give a result, does, and it changes the color to purple, then we have a problem. Our test is probably contaminated. Hey okay, guys, because this is such a tedious process, I'm not going to record me pipetting into all the wells, but I did want to show you, I have the simulated antigen in my pipetter right now. And you'll notice I have the edge of my pipetter right up to the edge of the well so that I can pipette right down the side by capillary action. So I'm just going to put one, two, three drops in that well. You can see it. And then I'm going to move on and do all of the wells in rows A and B with the simulated antigen. Hi guys, so what I've done, and you'll follow along with the protocol, is basically you have filled, you have pre-coated the bottom of rows A and B with the simulated antigen. 
right? And then you've added in, in triplicate, we always wanna do things more than one time so we know it's not random. Uh, wells one, two, and three, right, in row A, have the uh, positive control, and then four, five, and six have the negative, and then we have patient one in these three, patient two's serum in this, come down to row B, patient three, patient four, patient five, and patient six. Okay, or I should say patients A through F. <clears throat> so right now, in these wells, we have the antigen, and then if any of these patients serum, right, and definitely the positive control in wells one through three, there should be this metaphorical sandwich between the primary antibody and the antigen that's now stuck to the bottom of the well. But how are we actually gonna be able to see that? This is when we're gonna come in, and then I'll film right after I do it, is I'm gonna add three drops of the simulated secondary antibody, which also doesn't have a color, but right after I add that, I'm gonna add three drops of the chromogen. So if there is a sandwich between the antigen, the primary antibody, which again is in the patient's serum, the secondary antibody, and then the chromogen, you'll see a color change to dark purple. If not, it'll stay green. Hi guys, so it says to wait about five or 10 minutes to reveal your results, and mine are not perfect, especially because in the first three of row B, I actually ran out of the chromogen. So I don't know if it's negative here because I didn't have chromogen or because it's actually negative. But this is important to note, our three positive controls are purple, as to be expected. The three negative controls remain light green, as expected. And then it appears that patient A, right, three positive results. Patient B looks like three positive, although the one here is very weak, but again, I ran out of some reagent. Patient C, negative. Patient D, positive. Patient E, negative. And patient F, negative, according to my results. And I'll post a picture as well.